Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back for this week's video on Tesla's virtual power plant. This is an exciting one. It's a new program they started rolling out about a month ago uh, to PG&E and SC&E customers, and it had its first event last night. Uh, so you may have seen a notification that said something like you have an event from 6 to 9 p.m. If you're wondering what that was, let's go over the basics. Uh, first off, the virtual power plant is a demand response program. It's kind of similar to Ohm Connect or Smart AC. Basically, it's a program that helps when the grid's in a time of need uh, to reduce demand. And by reducing that demand, we're not using the dirty peaker plants that are usually your most expensive and your dirtiest electricity. Um, by using the virtual power plant, you're taking that stored electricity that you have in your batteries. It's usually mostly from solar. Um, you know, some people may do some grid charging, but otherwise it's clean solar electricity and it's sending it back to the grid at its time of need. And you're getting paid $2 per kilowatt hour for it. Now keep in mind, each power wall is around 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So that's about $25 a power wall per event. We have three power walls. So we're looking at 70, $75 per event. That's pretty awesome. So. Let's look and see what happens when there's actually an event going on. So what you're actually seeing here is the screen from the app the night before the event. Uh, it's about 7 p.m. Uh, all you're gonna see is a notification just like it was a Stormwatch event or um, something similar. You can click that or down below to the virtual power plant menu. Once you pop that up, it's gonna give you your basic info on which program you're in, either PG&E or SC&E at this point, um, and then how many homes are in your fleet. And then that middle box there is gonna tell you uh, when there's an event planned, usually with 24 hours notice if possible, unless it's an emergency. Um, once you actually click on the event, it'll show you details showing the start time for charging, and then the actual start time for the discharge, and the end time for the event. Um, just to be clear, those that are in time-based control really aren't gonna notice a difference in the power wall behavior here. Um, you're still gonna use the grid as normal and then you'll avoid using the grid during those peak times. Um, those that are in self-powered mode, um, they are gonna see the biggest difference because basically once that start charging time starts, you're gonna start using the grid and all your solar is gonna go towards the power walls. Uh, I'll go into that in a little more detail in a little bit. Here you'll see the app at about 6.50 in the morning. This is after that 5 a.m. start time. I was expecting it to grid charge starting at 5 a.m., which it didn't do. Uh, it actually just changed that behavior uh, so that all the solar goes to the power walls and that the grid powers the house. Now, this was kind of a weird day for us because we had just gotten back from vacation the night before, so we had depleted our power walls, charged the house, the AC was running to cool it once we got back. Um, so the power walls were dead, so we were already on the grid. So even though we're in self-powered, we were using the grid. Normally you would see it switch from using the batteries to the grid if you're in self-powered, but if you're in that time-based control, you're probably just gonna see it, same as here, just all grid. One neat feature Tesla has included is real-time data tracking for both your house and for the fleet. Uh, it's kind of neat to see it ebb and flow throughout the day as the sun comes and goes. Um, like I said before, it was a weird day where we had depleted the power walls beforehand, but we also had this event um, during a cloudy day, so we didn't fill up our power walls beforehand. They only got to about 75% full, uh, as you can see in the graphs here. Um, you know, we took all our solar and put it in, but we still didn't have enough to utilize the power walls fully. So hopefully, you know, we'll get 50 to $60 from the event, but we'll see. So we finally made it, it's 6 p.m. As you can see here on the app, the batteries are discharging at that 15 to 16 kilowatts. It's pretty impressive. The uh, fleet is putting out 15,000 kilowatts. I believe it's 15 megawatt. Uh, that's really, really impressive. Um, what I am kind of curious to see is because I'm putting out 15 to 16 kilowatts, um, is that going to last? The battery is going to last the whole entire period. It doesn't seem like they will, especially at 74%, but I trust Tesla knows what they're doing. Um, what I also am showing here is the AC turning on during it because it does adjust it. I'm not sure how it's doing it. Um, it does not send as much back to the grid while the AC and the house usage is a little bit higher, but I'm not sure what it uses to actually determine that. Now we're at about an hour and 20 minutes in and you can hear those power rolls really working. The ambient temperature in the garage is about 92 and those fans are going full blast. 
Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture the exact moment that the power walls ran out of charge. Um, it did confirm my suspicion that at that 15 to 16 kilowatt rate, we weren't going to last the whole time. Um, from what I could tell, it looks like about 7.50 to 8 p.m. the uh, power walls ran out of the charge. And uh, that was the end of the contribution. But you can see here, even after I stopped contributing, it kept on going for the rest of that hour. At about 9 p.m., it was still all the way up at 4,000 uh, kilowatt, which is pretty impressive, pretty impressive. So to do a post-mortem here, I think it's a great program in general. Uh, you know, basically no inconvenience to me at all. I didn't notice it happening. There were no blips in power in the house. The lights didn't go out when the batteries ran out. So I think overall it was executed very well. Just have some minor little quips or whatever you want to call it uh, about it. Um, one of them being that the app doesn't show you really how much you sent back. You can look at the graphs as I can show you here, um, and they're kind of giving you different answers. At 74%, you would expect roughly 30 kilowatt hours going back to the grid on those three power walls. But it looks like here uh, from the one graph, it says 24 kilowatt hours, assuming the other went to the house, but I'm not sure what that number is below there. Uh, I don't know, it could be a little bit clearer. I also wish uh, kind of dovetails into another request that I've had for a while that they would let you select a time period, say 5 to 8 p.m. and tell you how much you produce or how much you use, et cetera, during those time periods. Just think it would be easier to see data and read it based upon that, but hopefully that's something that will be implemented in the future. But. Anyways, uh, it's been great. Hopefully we'll have a bunch more of these videos uh, or a bunch more of these events coming up. Uh, if you have any questions, comments about the video, let me know uh, down below. As always, you can join the virtual power plant to use your own self-referral if you're a Tesla customer already. If not, feel free or if you're feeling really nice, use mine down below. Should get you $300 off either your solar roof or your solar panels. Uh, as always, hope you enjoy. Have a good one.